When Right Honorable Simon Bakola Long took over the mantle of leadership as the seventh elected governor of Plateau State in 2015, he was fully aware of the enormity of responsibility bestowed upon him by the people of the state who had high expectations after massively voting for him in a historic election. Armed with his experience as a lawyer, legislator and indeed the longest serving speaker of the Plateau State House of Assembly, Governor Simon Bagolalong quickly settles down for business. He immediately assembled a team to assist him tackle challenges inherited from his predecessor, Governor John Devi Jang of the PDP. Some of these challenges ranging from fragile peace and insecurity, economic deprivation and lack of social justice, abandoned projects and infrastructure deficit, and a demoralized civil service among others required urgent attention. Nothing was working. Civil servants were on strike. There were arrears of salaries of about eight months for civil servants, about nine or ten months for pensioners, about 12 months for teachers. Teachers were also on, stri on strike. Even the judiciary was on strike. Couple with that was a state that what was all done in Plateau State was about when you watch television, you will just see crisis, how many people were killed every day. Business was taking its flight. People were running away from the state completely. Even within the state, there were areas that your fat will not allow you to move there. This was what I saw. Completely dissolution and discontentment. Tribalism, religious differences at, at its peak. The very first day I was sworn in, I asked, I said, God, why did you bring me here? But at the end of the day, I knelt down and prayed. I said, since you made me the governor of Plaza, please provide the vision. With his deputy, Professor Sonli Guanle Choden, Governor Samong Lalong conceptualized the agenda of his rescue administration encapsulated under the five pillar policy, which focused on peace, security and good governance, human capital development and social welfare, agriculture and rural development, entrepreneurship and industrialization, and physical infrastructure and environment. Shortly after winning re-election in 2019, the vision was modified to vision of peace, security and good governance, infrastructural development and sustainable economic rebirth to reflect the issues addressed and those outstanding for his final term in office. So after the first four years, we felt uh, there was a need to trim down uh, the terms of reference to three. And uh, that, that does not mean that um, we, were doing, we were not doing anything outside those, those terms. We were, but the broad framework was provided by those um, items. Every member of the city's city council is among equals, free to express his, 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 his concern and make his input. At the end of the day, you know, being a former legislator, he will say, how many of you are in support of this and so on and so forth? And people say, ah, we are supporting this. They say, this will have to get. Even if it does not favor him, he drops his own answer and adopts what the popular opinion is. So the, co the coordination apparently makes it easier because people were involved. With this eight-year tenure winding down, the people of Plateau State can look back with pride at some of the key achievements of his rescue administration, which speak volumes about his passion for the development of the state. In terms of physical infrastructural development, Governor Simon Bakolalong chose a new path to governance where he chose continuity over political gimmicks. Rather than neglect the retinue of abandoned and uncompleted projects scattered all over the state, he chose to complete them and save the state losses running into billions of Naira. I look at some of these projects that were very, very useful to the society and were abandoned. So I started. The most important, I think the most hectic one was that 
I told you there were no roads inside Plateau. No road. The former governor was already starting a bridge at the Secretariat, which was 20%. The whole line from Secretariat Junction to Mararaban Jama, there was no road. That's the major entry to the town. There was no road. If I don't do this road, where will people be coming into the state? They will be running around Miango, they will run around Du village. But I am back on it. I finished the bridge, which was about 20%. Documents are there. From 20%, I completed that bridge, the overhead bridge. And I took that road from that sectariat to Mararaban Jama, which was commissioned by President Muhammad Buhari. The people of Plateau State and other road users will not forget in a hurry the harrowing pains they experienced on the Secretariat Junction Old Airport Bukuru to Mararaban Jama Expressway, where work was abandoned on only one lane when Governor Lalong took over. Today, the story is different. It is the major road in Plateau State. When you are coming from Bauchi Meduguri, passing to Abuja, you pass through this road. But because of the road was so bad, so the Plateau man was not feeling very happy about the road. So it's now that the government have now looked onto this road, the work will be good and the work will benefit Plateau man. That last, I, I, let me say, before the cost, uh, working, it be, uh, if we reach this site, before the car will move, it's very difficult. We will stay in the bus. Sometimes we will be side, like fighting each other in the bus because we are tired inside. Lalong also completed the Joseph Ngomok Secretariat Junction flyover and roads, dualization of old airport Rayfield Government House with spurs to Giring and Chango Piang, completion of Rayfield Yelua Club Junction Road, Kugia Rahol Kanang Road, among others within the Josbukru metropolis. Many other road projects were also initiated and completed within the Josbukru metropolis. They include the Miango Junction Kufang Rafiki Roads, Jos Wildlife Park to Dong Federal Low Cost Rantia Road Networks, Low Cost Roundabout through Domkat Bali and Old Airport State Low Cost Road Networks, Rehabilitation of Tudungwada Ring Road, Maza Junction into Maza Village Road, Angworu Kuba through Etobaba to Old Lamingo Dam Road, among several others. Lalong also paid attention to intra-city roads under the Operation Zero potholes and urban development covering over 41 road projects. They include, among others, the construction of Angworimi to Angworogo to Bauchi Road, Alikazore to Angworogo Road, Rayfield to Zarmagando Road, British America Murtala Mohammed to Taminos Road, Anguldi to Vom Road, Zawang to College of Health Road, Hillcrest Plateau Hospital to Dogong Karfe Road, Plateau Hospital to Dental Clinic Road, Timba Shade to Challenge Bookshop Road, Tina Junction to Duse Oku Road, Angorukuba to Etobaba Road, among others. He balanced paying salaries and continuing infrastructural development all in one soup. You understand? So it's anybody who says Lalong hasn't done anything. I think it's a joker. People do not really know what they have till after the person has left. And let me tell you the truth. When Governor Simon Bakola Long leaves office, that's when a lot of people would, would say, had we known. Governor Lalong decided to spread project execution across the other senatorial zones of the state in order to ensure that no part of the state is left out from enjoying the dividends of democracy. You needed to give people a sense of belonging by identifying projects of clear need across the local government. And that informed the government giving the award in the first instance of about 22 number contracts to give them a sense of belonging. In the central zone, for instance, the east to Lankang Road in Pangxing and Tenti Monguna Dafo Road were embarked upon while the Mangu Bypass was rewarded after the initial contract was revoked. In the southern zone, there is the Kalong Angwandari to Shendam Road, Long Yelwa Mato Junction Taraba Border Road in Shendam Local Government Area, Dukan Kaswa Kuala Kurbi Road in Kwangpan Local Government Area, Rehabilitation of Langtang Garkawa Yelwa Shendam Long Road, Shandam bypass and internal road networks, among others. We did about 28 roads 
and each of the communities, each of local government we had a role. So we started. Unfortunately, we got to a time with the COVID and many of the economic problems that we had in the country we are not able to complete many of the roads. But I can tell you that all those roads started at the same time. When we got bailouts, we started everywhere. So that communities, so if you see construction going on in one local government, you will see it in another local government simultaneously. Those projects were going, about 28 of those projects. Some of them, yes, almost completed. Some of them we've completed and commissioned. Some of them still under construction. Uh, you can go from street to street here, everywhere tap, everywhere very looking very clean. In fact, we are much very happy. I believe this community, Oshandam Central Road B, this is the first time we enjoy the dividend of democracy. To further ease the traffic situation within the Joss Metropolis, Governor Lalong awarded the contract for the construction of the British American flyover and dualization to Lamingo Junction roundabout, which was completed in record time. His Excellency and his government have done exceptionally well in ensuring development not only in Joss but throughout Plateau State and of course also helping the federal government to do some of these projects with the hope that they will be repaid uh, later on. This bridge is the link to all the Northeast states. People coming to Bauchi, go by the time you get there, there was no bridge. Each time the area was chalked up. I said, I will continue with this bridge. I will finish this bridge. He said, how long will you do that before I leave? I said, I will do it in one year. He said, one year? I said, yes. You come and lay the foundation. He laid the foundation and in less than one year, we have finished that bridge. First of all, I would like to uh, commend the governor for his resolve to embark on this monumental strike. It's really what a resounding applause. He has really done well because this road is really timely. The road construction is timely. Another area the Lalong Rescue Administration paid attention to was in the area of street lighting, where it installed street lights within Joss and Bukuru Metropolis under the Operation Light Up Plateau, covering a distance of 90 kilometers. The street lights have so many benefits. First of all, you look at uh, aspect of uh, security, it has reduced street crimes to some extent. And we highly, with every sense of uh, joy, appreciate the government for that. Because at least it really helps the, the ongoing business. In like before, whereby people do close maybe around uh, six. Within the health sector, Governor Simon Bakola long sustained his commitment to providing quality health services. He completed several secondary health facilities. These include the Riom General Hospital and Trauma Center, which was abandoned for 13 years, as well as the General Hospital Mabudi in Langtan South local government, equally abandoned at foundation level. Go there and see the equipment. Instead of that, we don't have those equipment in any of our hospitals. Presently, we will be competing in Jude in some of them, in some areas. Because all go there, go to their maternity, go to a um, dental unit, completely things, modern equipment provided. Sometimes we're wondering how we're going to get those people to come and handle those equipment. This is a huge plus to us in the local government, having a project like this. And it so happened that this is the only hospital that we have around, knowing fully that this is an access road into the town. We've had cases of accidents severally, and sometimes the accident victims, giving, they end up giving up on time because we don't have an emergency place to give that assistance. The Plateau Specialist Hospital got a huge boost with the procurement of ultra-modern medical equipment such as Superstar MRI machine, 64 slices CT scanner, 4D ultrasound scanner, and digital x-ray machines among others. We did not only renovate the place as a special specialist hospital, but the equipments there are exactly the equipments that are, just, at, are at the Joshua University Teaching Hospital. The MRI is there, CT scan is now there. This is what has never been done in Plateau. So you don't need to run to Jute. Many people will prefer inside the town to just move into Plateau Hospital. 
The Lalong administration also created the Plateau State Health Insurance Management Agency, Plashima, to give succor to the citizens in terms of accessing quality, affordable and timely medical care in the state. One of Governor Lalong's most ambitious infrastructure initiatives is the Legacy Project, primarily focused in the health and education sectors across the 17 local governments of the state. Government embarked on the construction of a world-class primary and secondary schools as well as hospitals across the three senatorial zones. These comprise of eight primary schools, six secondary schools and six hospitals which are at various stages of completion. Each of the primary school you see we are constructing is of international standard. Then six secondary schools of international standard and all those nine were spread across the senatorial zones. The same thing with the six secondary schools that were spread. There were also two, two in each of the senatorial zones. And there's six health centers of international standard. That is what we have been doing up to this moment. If you now move to most of these local government, you will see that some of them are at 80 something percent completion. For this laudable effort, of citing the Lalong Legacy Project in Kaskurui. In fact, most of the high institutions in the state are envying us. They say, why is it in Kaskurui and not other places? But only God knows. But I think this has actually added value to the college. I think by the time this, this, this project is over, I will feel, will feel as if we are in a small, a mini university. Some of the gigantic projects that this government have cited in Rium. One is the La Long Legacy Project, which is sited just opposite to my house. Because from my house, if I just come out, I will just see that project. And it is the first time we are seeing upstairs a school, a secondary school that has been built upstairs in the local government. I hope that the next government will continue with that. Because that is my emphasis and dream, that each government will come. When you come, take the low-hanging fruits. When you see a project already ongoing, you complete the project. When you complete the project, the commission, they will call your name. I completed this project, they call my name. I was the one who commissioned the bridge of my bridge. I commissioned the road. I didn't start it. I've started my own. If I don't finish my own, I expect that the next governor will come and continue. It's for the benefit of Plateau State because the resources are meant for the people. It's not meant for you. It's not meant for Governor Lalong. Governor Lalong will live. But it's meant for Plateau people. Plateau people will be the ones who enjoy it. Why waste resources? As a lawyer, Governor Samung Lalong was determined to ensure that the judiciary is transformed. He constructed the ultra-modern new high court complex in Jos with determination to overhaul all courts in the state, including the High Court of West of Mines. This is in addition to improving the welfare of judicial officers and implementing full autonomy for the judicial arm of government. Uh, this administration has done very well. Uh, Mark you, is the first government in Nigeria, subnational, to grant autonomy to the judiciary. They much talked about autonomy, which is only about to be implemented nationwide uh, following the constitutional amendment that is ongoing. But Plateau State was the first to um, grant autonomy to the legislature and the judiciary and went about implementation I think about June 2021. When uh, the Lalong administration came into being, uh, one of the cardinal object objectives I had the governor mention was that he came to continue projects that were left over by the previous administration. And one of those projects is the new High Court complex. It's going to provide for us in one house, in one building, nine courtrooms. So nine judges will be able to sit simultaneously in very good accommodation. 
very good ambience, very good working environment. The Plateau State multi-door courthouse was also constructed and equipped. The, another angle is that um, we also realize that the world is moving towards alternative dispute resolution. There is this fatigue with litigation as you know it, okay? The combative court process of uh, my right, my right, your rights. So business community particularly, the world over, is shifting towards alternative dispute res uh, resolution, just mediation, conciliation, arbitration. And uh, we realize that um, this plateau cannot be left behind. So the idea is to give the public a choice that if you have simple matters that can be handled by ADR, you don't have to go to court and be getting adjournments every day. ADR is a cheap, affordable, and speedy process that is built around mostly consensus and willingness of parties to resolve their disputes like it's done in traditional settings. The Nigerian Union of Journalists Press Center in Jos was also remodeled, reconstructed by Governor Simon Bakwala Long as a way of appreciating the contributions of the fourth estate of the realm in the development of the state. This place was given to the NUJ in 1982 by the Solomon Lara administration. Since then, there, there has been some small, small torches, walks, and things like that. But there hasn't been any turnaround like it's been done now. I don't know if you saw it while they were, the place was being broken down. You, you know, it, it was constructed with mud blocks. Frankly, since 82, nothing has happened here like this. Now, but, and that's a function of the relationship between him and the press. Governor Lalong's administration also made a huge impact in the educational sector from primary to tertiary level. For instance, it constructed over 1,000 new primary and junior secondary school classrooms across the state, renovated 724 classrooms, fenced several schools, renovated many examination halls, recruited and trained more teachers, and generally improved sanitation and hygiene in schools. The public schools on the plateau have the best teachers. Our teachers are well trained and they must be NCE holders and they must be degree holders. For learning to go on properly, the environment must be conducive. When we came in, most of these schools we are not, we are, don't let me say I saw. And when we went round with this, uh, um, Efforts being made by paying our counterpart funding, the schools, like the primary schools, got renovated. The junior primary schools got renovated. And then the issue of Agile came in. That is Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment. It's a World Bank project, which the Lalong Administration got for the state. It is the only state in the North Central states that got it. This Agile project has given the Lalong administration a very big hands up because all the schools on the plateau, all, I'm saying all, both junior secondary and senior secondary schools are being renovated in every local government, all. So the junior and, se and senior secondary schools are about 618. And there is none now that is not under renovation with wash facilities, ICT, with labs, and uh, just go in. We ask the schools to tell us their needs. And every school that gave their needs, we provided that. At the tertiary level, the Lalong government injected so many resources in turning around the fortunes of its institutions. At the College of Education, Gindiri, 100% accreditation of courses was achieved for the first time in a long while and a combined convocation for six sets was organized. A similar situation was also achieved at the College of Agriculture while the College of Arts, Science and Technology, Kurgui, was upgraded to a polytechnic and named Ignatius Longjang Polytechnic. 
For the Plateau State University Bokos, it is the story of total revival as the institution which was closed prior to Lalong assuming office was reopened and repositioned into one of the most vibrant state universities in Nigeria. Many courses were successfully accredited and new courses established while four new faculties of medical science, law, agriculture and environmental sciences were introduced. Under Governor Lalong, Plasu conducted seven convocations while a teaching hospital for the university has been earmarked at Shindam. Nothing was going on there and I brought back that university. Today, the university has not only graduated students, but with first class everywhere. Just recently, I was there. When I had eight first class, I gave them automatic employment. They are now lecturers in the university. 